with the liquid what it do we back again part two of the um crip assassin bro i was like give me three likes and i'll finish it right i ain't even gonna lie to you i didn't really think i was gonna get that three likes i was just like whatever bro I'm just gonna drop it and we're just gonna drop it if it does good it does good if not on to the next one but uh, supposedly surprisingly it did pretty good and forever with my comment talking about not Donald Duck doing the voice uh, commentary. <sighs> Whatever. Let's get into it. Don't even hold y'all. We back again. He wants to become the king of the streets, the powerful leader of the Georgia Rolling Sixties. At this time, and really still to this day, the streets in the South had absolutely zero structure. Nobody. I had did um. I had did a um. It was, a, it was a little reaction, not nothing serious, you feel me? Um, apparently, after Swamp dropped this story, uh, I guess Adam 26, 26, I meant Adam 16 or whatever the case is, right? Uh, they got on the phone with him and whatnot, bro. They got on the phone with him or whatnot, and um, I don't know, I guess they were trying to press him, whatever the case is, I don't freaking know, but of course, you're going to hear that typical... Come, come, come to Cali, bro. Come to Cali. You know, we're going to squabble. This and the third. Woo, dee, woo. I guess somebody was in their feelings about the video because not even 24 hours later, this nigga was on. Was, he was, like, it wasn't even a full interview, bro. It was just, they just had him on the phone. And he was acting brick baby certain question. And it was one question where Lush was, you know, yeah, eggplant riding, bro. And, you know, like, no, nah, we ain't finna talk about that. We ain't finna talk about that. He listened or followed orders from anyone, and it was pretty much every man for himself. No certified OGs, DPs, put-ons, none of that. So essentially what Zaire was trying to do was bring the Los Angeles way to Georgia, where he could have people under him and serving anything he wanted. So in order to do this, he hit the streets hard and recruited new members, guys who were under him and who would do- I ain't even gonna lie to you, I'm gonna be real, right? I'm gonna be real with y'all. Love you. You can get Daddy's phone on the bed. It's over there. But, um, yeah, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. Loki, I wanted to finish this video my damn self, bro. Like, like, I literally said, like, bro, ain't nobody gonna give me that three life, bro. I'm like, I was like, bro, because there's some time lifting, you know, we, you know. This is our office, this is our room, whatever the case you want to call it, right? Every time I'm like, I ain't really doing nothing serious on, on the computer, I go get me some food and, you know, pull up some video, whatever I want to watch. And I'm like, man, ain't nobody going ain't nobody gonna to give me that three likes. Ain't nobody care about that video. I'm going to just go ahead and finish that shit my damn self. I thought about it. I almost did y'all dirty. Do anything he said, and in the process, believe it or not, they took over some serious hoods, and this is how Zaire truly made his name in Atlanta. From the notorious Four Seasons Apartments, the West End, and a Southside hood known as Shady Park. While in the process of expanding the set, Zaire unfortunately brought some havoc to the streets. In typical LA fashion, he began robbing and extorting rappers, a trend that Atlanta had never seen before. No, that's somebody I robbed that was Gucci best friend. This is how he becomes known for robbing in Atlanta, somebody that you'd rather have on your side than against you. So he's basically extorting people for friendships, but on the flip side, he's also pretty intelligent. After befriending a local Rolling 60 by the name of Pee Wee Longway, he ends up running his bag up like never before. If you're unfamiliar, Pee Wee was a very well-known hustler in the streets of Atlanta, known for running up millions. And because of this, he had connections to the up-and-coming and major rappers in Atlanta. Boy, that's that young uh, thugger right there, boy. And because Dreads ain't even pushing yet. Them because of this, he had connections. He looked like he only got two teeth slimed, like he only living. You know, they said shy used to be dusty. To the up and coming and major rappers in Atlanta. I met everybody through Pee Wee Longway. That's my brother. That's like my brother in law. As they were constantly in studios and surrounded by rappers, they decided to join together and to start a music label. This would be known as Money Piles and Ammo, also known as MPA. 
Okay, so you guys start rolling together and you guys start MPA together. We around it so much. Let's pay for some studio time, shoot a couple videos. Let's just see where this shit goes. Unfortunately, they had no idea how to properly run a business, but aside from that, Zaire had a special ear for talent. In fact, he discovered Young Thug in 2008 and actually started managing his career early on. Without having him signed to any sort of paperwork, Zaire had him in the studio and was also introducing him to some bigger names. In fact, in 2009, he even brought him to LA to try to get him in the studio with Nipsey Hussle. I started showing. How you run away from LA because of the whole situation, right? Niggas coming at you or whatever the case is. And you decide to take an artist. What if this nigga would have never been here today? What if that shit would have went south? On him, the game with, with, with what's going on on the West Coast too. Right. You know, I took him in front of Nip in like 09 and told him to work with him. And Nip was like iffy. Thug was slime, man. He was real. He was real, like, you know what I'm saying? He right. was out here robbing sh doing all this, you know, real. regular hood. So. The point is that he was helping out Atlanta artists and he had a really good ear for talent. So not only does he have a potentially major label at his hands, but he's also doing pretty well financially. In fact, in 2009, he copped a nice condo in Sandy Springs, a fly whip, and you know, he was just doing his thing. Once again, things are truly looking good for him, but sadly, this is when he's met with some terrible luck. October 22nd, 2009. It's a Thursday night in North Atlanta and Zaire is headed down Interstate 19, headed towards downtown. As he's cruising down, a Georgia State Patrol gets behind him and runs his tags. Unfortunately, he never registered the car, so the officer hits the chair. Aw shit, here we go again. Zaire knows that he's riding dirty as a convicted felon, so he smashes on the pedal. Now he's on a high-speed chase. Bruh. So Brick was doing GTA shit in, 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 in Georgia before Georgia really started popping with the GTA shit, huh? Cutting in and out of traffic in Buckhead, and then skirt, he smashes into a pole. Just like that, the officers are able to pull him out of the car and they find weapons inside. This time, it's no joke, because he's facing four separate felonies. So, already being a convicted felon, he's looking at up to 12 years in prison. But somehow, once again, Zaire is able to completely avoid prison and only get a few months in jail. What? A convicted felon in documented Rolling 60s Crip only gets a few months in jail for four separate felonies. That shit is not sliding down here in Florida. I'm going to tell y'all that now. I'm going to tell y'all that now. From the first incident, what was the first incident? I think it was something about he had bricks on him or whatever the case was, right? Um, yeah, no, nah, Florida's not playing with you with that shit, bro. Florida don't give, Florida don't even give a damn if you got a full scholarship to go play for whatever school, bro. The fact that you choose something stupid to do before going off to school, we're gonna make an example out of you. Florida is known to make an example out of people, bro. So. I'm assuming this was before Georgia became really strict with the laws. If I'm if I'm wrong, y'all let me know though, but felonies. That makes no sense in my mind. Well, once again he gets off easy and he's right back on the streets in early 2010. But Bro, you getting off that early and coming back to the hood? <laughs> Niggas gonna be looking at you funny, bro. Like, wait a minute, bro. Like we we ain't saying that we're praying on your downfall or anything like that, but hold up, nigga. You a felon, they got caught with a possession of a firearm. How the hell? Nigga, who'd you tell on? What you do? You feel me? But not for long. On July 28, 2010, he would have another high-speed chase while on probation. And yet again, he's caught with a weapon and facing 10 years in prison. Well, damn, CJ. All you had to do was follow the train. But mysteriously, the judge lets him off easy and he only does 18 months. Now before you call him a snitch or an informant, do understand that this is Fulton County, which is a complete joke. See? What? See, so at that time, like I said, unless I was wrong, but unless I'm still wrong, y'all correct me. The real Georgia native though, but um, around 2009, Georgia was pretty lenient on the laws, bro. 
Well, regardless, it's now 2012 and the MPA boss returns to the streets. While he was away, Pee Wee Longway was able to discover young rappers Lil Durk, Rich Homie Quan, and a group called the Migos. Rich Homie Quan before he came out. I'm hearing 21 Savage before he came out. So as soon as Zaire got out of prison, he was connected with them and actually started helping their careers. Not only did he pay for their studio time and connect them with rappers, but he also... Hey, um, correct me. Well, I'm always gonna say that. I don't really care. But, uh... Do me a favor, y'all let me know for real, for real, right? Because it's kind of funny how when all these rappers blew up, me personally, I did not know anybody named Brick Baby or or Tavius that, you know, um, never heard nothing about Brick Baby. Not until, uh, no jumper started popping and after a while, I don't know, this nigga just, just hit the fiend. For me, I feel like he just hit the fiend out of nowhere because at that time I kind of stopped being on YouTube. So when I did get back on YouTube, I feel like I just started seeing Brick Baby. Now, to be back on YouTube and doing my reaction, right? And we're doing this reaction to Swamp. And for him to be talking about, he put uh, Slime, uh, um, Slime, uh, Migos, Rich Homie on and all that. Like, you know, he, he paid the way and all that shit. Y'all let me know, or y'all, yeah, y'all let me know. Is there any song from any one of them that shouted out Brick Baby at that time? Maybe I missed past it. Y'all let me know, though provided them with protection. Dirk being an outsider from Chicago and the Migos being suburban wannabes, they both could use some protection. But most importantly, the biggest thing he provided was protection whenever the rappers went to LA. In fact, he even brought Future to LA for the very first time. You know what I'm saying? I've been that person like bringing them out here. Like I had Future, I turned LA on the Future. I, 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 nobody, I was listening to Dirty Sprite One. You know, I brought them out here to do a song with Nip. Essentially, he was every rapper's connection whenever they'd go to LA. He was the first and only call. Remember this because it will be very important. Well, as we know, everyone around him and Pee Wee was getting rich and famous during this period. And after a while, they got kind of tired of being the guys in the background and they wanted to try rapping for themselves. So Zaire would become MPA Shitro or MPA Brick Baby and Pee Wee was still Pee Wee Longway. Early on, things were looking bright for the duo as they had the help of Dirk, Future, Young Thug, Gucci Man, and more. Basically, because of everything they had done for them, if they ever needed a feature, it was done right away. But then, unfortunately, as things are going up for Brick Baby, he catches another felon in possession charge in Los Angeles. So we gonna keep the government name all the way up until he follow up with Brick Baby, huh? Angeles. And this time he's sentenced to three years in prison. As he's sitting in a lonely prison cell, everyone around him is getting rich and famous. Young Thug signs with Birdman and blows up, Future blows up, Lil Durk blows up, Rich Homie Quan blows up, Pee Wee Longway blows up, well, kind of, but you get the point. Oh, and don't forget that the Migos get a feature with Drake and they're out of here as well. So literally everyone who was with him in Atlanta completely blow up and get nationally famous. All while Zaire Brick Baby is sitting in a California prison with no fame or nothing. Damn, California. that would shatter any man's ego. Don't act like it wouldn't. But on the flip side, because they're all rich and famous now. If you're selling a product online and you're not using so, it, you might be overspending thousands of dollars on your shipping. This is what your house the looks fact like that you 500 orders in like I didn't know he got locked hours. up in LA so or Cali, right? Dude. To all my business owners, Wasn't there still a bounty on his head for he whatever? So how did he survive? Out, definitely put him on. So three long years go by and Brick Baby is finally released. It's 2015 and Brick Baby is finally home expecting a warm welcome. But as soon as he touches down, a harsh... Um, I was going on a year out of school now. Shit, nigga, I was just... Nigga, I was, what, barely into my... I was 19, going to be 20. Yeah, if I am mistaken, boy, I was... Life was so fucking good reality kicks in. These guys are not your real friends. Aside from Thug, Pee Wee, and Dirk, his friends were not there to help him out and pretty much wanted nothing to do with him. You you know, you told me earlier that you've been cut off. People cut you off or something of that sort. My my industry friends that I thought was my friends now. Free YSL, Gunna Slime. 
Y'all did, you know what I'm saying? You, you already know, we ain't even got to talk long are we, way. Are we speaking Dirt. like a... After everything he did for some of his friends in the industry, he really took it hard. So bro, we could go through DMs or when you was up and coming, we could do that. I just feel like they wanted to be around me when they was broke because they didn't have nothing. So now you a millionaire now, you don't want that type of pressure around. But you think I'm gonna turn that energy on you? You my boy, I love you. I wouldn't give a fuck if you had a dollar or a billion. I'm gonna treat you the same way. Brick Baby was now a peon or an afterthought to many people he helped out, and this truly hurt his. I'm starting to think that's why he ended up on the phone call with with Adam. If he ended up at the peon. <laughs> Ego. Now, instead of being the guy who helps out rappers and protects them, he reverts to being the guy who wants to rob them. <laughs> Don't come to LA. Unless your name is Dirk, Thug, or Pee Wee, you better tuck your tail. So as the streets tell it, Brick Baby becomes the biggest chain collector in LA. Basically, he had a hold young on, Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm still confused. Listen, if y'all know, if, if y'all know the situation, let me know. I'm confused. If... How did he go from leaving LA because, you know, motherfuckers wanted him unalive due to his cousin or whatever the affili uh, affiliated was, affiliation, to... He putting all these artists on, and now he's back in L.A. running, running L.A. Rolling 60s members doing serious homework in the streets. This included having them sit at the airport for rappers to come to town, and then following their cars back to their hotel. Then they'd relay all of this information back to Brick, and he'd do with it what he pleased. So basically, without them knowing, rappers were being tracked by Brick Baby the second they stepped foot in LA. Then he and the Rolling 60s would wait for the perfect opportunity to strike, then they'd get up on him and give me everything you got. So just like that, he went from being known as the helpful guy in the industry to the Boogeyman. And because of this reputation, he would be featured on YG's notorious song, Don't Come to LA. Don't come to LA, Ralphus for their jewelry. <laughs> Bro, LA is so corny, bro. But anyways, <laughs> as the YG feature would help his recognition, he was still hurting financially. How I know this? Well, he was now 29 years old and still taking penitentiary chances. And that takes us to September 21st, 2017. <laughs> it's an early Thursday afternoon on the west side of LA, and Brick and two Rolling 60s members are masking up for a lick. In particular, they aim to hit a high-end jewelry store in the wealthy Marina Del Rey. So at 1 p.m., they arrive in front of the store in a gray Range Rover SUV. Then they quickly hop out of the car and run inside the store with bags. <laughs> Once they're able to secure a few expensive items, they run out of the store and hop back in the Range Rover. Brick then quickly speeds away, not realizing that LAPD are already behind him. After bending a few blocks, he hears the sirens and knows they're in trouble. So Let he me guess, he punches get off the gas and huh? runs to left down a residential road. This is when he finally realizes that it's a dead-end street. So now he has no choice but to stop the car and run inside a nearby apartment. While he barricades himself in the lobby, police completely surround the area. And from here, a six-hour standoff begins. Brick Baby in the 60s versus LAPD. Finally, at 7.30 p.m., Brick Baby surrenders. Misunderstanding tonight, or was it justified? A local rapper arrested after a tense standoff with officers in Marina Del Rey, but his family says police got the wrong guy. NBC4's Beverly White just spoke with his family and police. Beverly. That's right, Chuck. LAPD says it started with a 20-minute pursuit this afternoon of a man traveling in a silver Range Rover, and it ended when he ducked into this apartment building in the 13,900 block of Pan A Way. That music video from YouTube is of local rap artist Brick Baby, the 29-year-old now in LAPD custody after a standoff in Marina Del Rey, identified by his mother, who declined to give her name. <sighs> the already three-time felon is facing two more of them things. Because of his history and the severity of the charges, he's facing up to 15 years in prison. Definitely nothing to scoff at. Of course, his family doesn't want to see him go away for a long time. And because of this, they go on the news and blame everything on his co-defendant. His mom goes on the news and says, my son didn't rob anyone. In fact, he doesn't even own a gun. And get ready for this one. His friend is actually the one who robbed the store and Brick only drove him away because of adrenaline. So she evidently threw his co-defendant under the bus. 
And I don't know, is this snitching? It's his mom, but yeah, it's snitching, right? Well, long story short, Brick is let off easy again as he's sentenced to four years in prison. And even though this isn't that much time, with four felonies on his record, what is he going to do for the rest of his life? Obviously, this is a harsh reality for a guy in his 30s, but sadly, during his prison stay, things get even worse. The music world is mourning Grammy-nominated rapper Nipsey Hussle, Fish. who was killed in a shooting yep. in Los Angeles. Hustle was shot multiple times yesterday in a parking lot outside his clothing store. Bro, when that shit happened, that shit blew up the internet, bro. That shit blew up the damn internet, man. I think I was at work when um I found out the news, and I'm like, bro, y'all need to stop playing with people, bro. That the more and more I kept going through freaking social media, and it was just like, nah, kid. What he meant to the community, if you want to look around right now, every single person that's out here, spending their time here, they're here because he spoke to them in some way, he inspired them in some way, they related to him in some way. He meant a lot. He meant everything to the community, you know. He was an entrepreneur, he was employing people, he loved his community, he was encouraging them and empowering them to be more the city of LA and more specifically the rolling 60s lost a legend and unfortunately brick baby would learn from a prison cell oh no I'm playing poker in the day room Not right now. so I'm playing poker and a dude from Blackstone come over from jungles he come over like shitty blood time. like they killed Nip I'm like stop playing with the set immediately I'm like stop playing bro I get on the phone I'm like hey what they talk about with Nip they like yeah he, he just got killed. And I'm like, huh? How did somebody come into the parking lot and kill bro? Like, he supposed to be untouchable in this parking lot. You get what I'm saying? Like, Brick is completely devastated and confused, and it gets even worse when he finds out who did it. His little homie, Eric Holder, the one who saved his life and put in work when he was paralyzed. Oh, and once he heard the story of how it transpired, this is... I knew that name rang a bell for a little bit, but I couldn't make it out. I just, I'm like, all right, whatever. We're just gonna go with it, right? Oh yeah. So that's why on the end, of, I'm listen. I'm gonna just drop that that video too. I'm gonna just go ahead and drop it. At first, I was like, eh, I'm gonna just go ahead and drop it. Fuck it. It's what hurt him the most. Did you know it could take your body up to eight weeks to recover after giving birth? Did you know that babies are supposed to sleep? No, the part where he was acting brick baby while he was on the phone with Adam talking about uh something about um why you ain't why you ain't something for um for his cousin or something and then just like everything I figured like yo no and that one lush like I said oh what you gotta ride and talking about no we ain't doing that basically he was with his girlfriend and he walked up to Nipsey in front of his store and when he goes to dap him up Nipsey refuses to shake his hand and calls him a rat. This is a major violation in the LA street code. You do not call someone a rat without paperwork and especially not in front of their girl. So Eric being one of the only actual steppers from the rolling 60s, he feels completely played and wants to do something to Nipsey. So long story short, he goes to his car, grab- Hold up, I just thought about that. Something ain't adding up. Or maybe may, like this, and I don't, I don't really know, but what I'm assuming, like, and I ain't gonna assume a lot of people just write and check that they can't cash, bro, because I'm already confused with the fact that he he messed up his basketball career, right? I'm just saying, which is gonna call it that. He messed up his basketball career, all right? Went back to LA doing the dumb shit. Um, he started getting busted at, so he says, forget that, move to Georgia, start that shit all over again, and then start putting rappers on, going back to uh, LA, live in LA, start chain snatching, but it was like, what I'm still confused with, I thought at one point, LA dude wanted you dead, though, and then another thing I'm confused is, how the hell did you even get by? If that's your cousin, bro, because I know they were saying at the time they were taking anybody that was related to him out. Absis Blake and walks back to the block. 
Then in front of an entire crowd of Rolling 60s members, he walks right up to Nipsey and lets him have it. After emptying his clip, he simply walks away as Nipsey's friends are frozen in shock. And because of how quickly and emotionally this happened, Brick realizes that if he was there, he could have calmed down Eric and made everything okay. Now look, I get wind that it's Cub. I'm like, oh, Cub. I'm like, man. I'm just like, man, how one of my close friends killed my other close friend while I was in jail. And so you always think like, damn, if I was on the streets, could I have stopped it? I probably could have took him to go smoke and slide and we could have went somewhere that sh would never happen. How Eric Holder was able to do this in front of all those people is beyond me, but it is California at the end of the day. And on top of this, instead of going by their own code and holding court in the streets, they decided to testify against him in court. What? What I've now learned doing Hold this on, for a few years is they decided to and on top of this, instead of going by That's their cowboy. own code and holding court in the streets, they decided to testify against him in court. What? Bro, what I've now learned doing this for a few years is that all of these LA street codes that they all say they abide by are pretty yeah. much never enforced. Or at least they pick and choose who they want to enforce them on. And on top of this, they're always contradicting themselves. But either way, we move on to another rapper loss that involves the rolling 60s. And that takes us right back to Atlanta, Georgia. As we all know, in the summer of 2020, Chicago rapper King Von would start an internet beef with Baton Rouge's NBA Youngboy. I guess it started over a girl, but for the sake of the video, the details don't really matter. Freaking girl. Well, because of Youngboy's close friendship with Rolling 60s rapper Quando Rondo, he was implicated in the beef as well. So for months, Von would instigate the beef and they would go back and forth online. Then eventually, Vaughn would take the internet beef to the streets. On the night of November 6, 2020, Quando Rondo and his friend Lil Tim would be at a lounge in Atlanta. Vaughn, who now happened to be living in Atlanta as well, would get word of this and he would pull up to the lounge. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Swamp. I'm not trying to tell you how to do your story, but if I'm, if I'm wrong, you know, they're going to correct us. But I could have sworn they said that he went down to L.A., for an album release, his, his, that, um, the last album that he dropped before he passed away. That boy came out so while Lil Tim is sitting in the Escalade and Quando Rondo was standing outside, King Von would pull up on him and start whooping his <laughs> As soon as Tim sees what's going on and Quando's on the ground surrounded by the Chicago goons, he lets off. Bam. Atlanta police say two people are dead after an officer involved shooting here on Trinity Avenue in downtown. As dawn turned to daylight, you could make out dozens of evidence markers. GBI crime scene investigators combing the scene. It hurt us. It hurt us a lot. I cried. Some some of my friends cried. He, he, he had a big influence on us. A really big influence. Obviously, this was a monumental moment in rap history as one artist lost his life to another. And unfortunately, everyone in the industry and the streets started picking sides. You're either on Vaughn and Lil Durk's side, or you're on Quando and Youngboy's side. There's no in-between. Well, despite the fact that Vaughn initiated all of this, and Quando's side arguably did nothing wrong, everyone was choosing Durk's side. This was so big that even Spotify and Apple Music are accused of taking Durk's side and blackballing Quando and Youngboy. He, he literally told me, he said, Apple blackballing Quando. He said, I talked to the people at Spotify, because you know Quando was signed to me. He said, they say they can't put him on so-and-so. It was either Apple or Spotify that said, they said, we can't put him on so-and-so because the other guy don't f with him and he ain't gonna f with us. So basically he was saying that Dirk either told Bro, listen, um, to me, I honestly feel like they love this shit. They live for this shit. The people that does this whole music industry that that have the stream to put you on this platform, that platform to help you, you know, grow even more than what you are. I feel like they really enjoy they um they enjoy this this whole thug shit between black folks, you know, killing black folks because it makes them more money in the end of the day when one of them are taken. Now to hear to hear a music uh platform like like uh Spotify or Apple Music is taking side with like a like a street beef war type shit, that that's insane. Like hold on. Y'all shouldn't even be biased. Y'all shouldn't even have your own like no. 
You feel me? But they they love this shit. Told Spotify or Apple that yo, if y'all if y'all with that guy, I ain't gonna fuck with y'all. So basically, they were picking sides, right? All the guys who always talk about the street code, the street code, the street code. Well, I guess it doesn't apply to this situation. King Von and his crew initiated the beef and Lil Tim stood up for his friend. What goes against the street code at all? But like I said with the streets picking and choosing what's okay, because Von and Dirk were the popular artists, everyone went against Quando and Tim. The game ain't acting like they're picking favorites, not standing on how the streets normally supposed to treat that. You're supposed to treat that as, I right, it is what it is. Now, of course, this is all the industry, so let's go back to the real streets. And when I say real streets, I'm talking about Brick Baby. All of this went down while Brick Baby was in prison, about a year before his release. Regardless though, upon his release, a lot of people were curious where his loyalties would lie. Are you loyal to your buddy Dirk, or to the Rolling 60s, specifically the set that you brought to Georgia? Now according to the LA street codes, you're never supposed to go against your own gang, cause at that point, what's the point of even being in it? When you're constantly talking about on 6-0 and on hood and riding and being loyal for the set, there's no way you can cross your own flag. However, when it comes to your millionaire friend, <laughs> all of that goes out the window. Right after his prison release, Brick Baby goes on no jumper and lets the world know where he stands. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 Kondo Rondo. You know, him. Boy, stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's gotta be weird for you because you with Dirk so much. It ain't weird for me. Yeah. It ain't weird for me at all. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Say, you're not from Rolling 60s. Oh, really? You're not from LA Rolling 60s. You're not from Rolling 60s. Oh, really? You're not from. LA rolling 60s, you not from rolling 60s. Wait, 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 wait. All those years of putting people on in Georgia and spreading the 60s out there, and you don't even respect them as rolling 60s? That makes no sense. That is the dumbest reason to say that you're not rocking with Quando because he's not from LA. <laughs> I was about to say, wait a minute, hold up. I was about to say, wait a minute. How do you go somewhere and start something and want everybody to join, one of them to be affiliated? Then would you go back to the actual motherland that that started the shit? Oh no, nah, no, nah, they're not really no, no. I was bored. I was bored and I went out there to do so, like, like we can't do clubhouse. Like, oh, you're part of the clubhouse. You you can't come to my clubhouse. I was just bored, bro. So that's what I did when I was out there. Georgia. That makes no sense. So to all the rolling. Rolling 60s out there that aren't in LA see this and understand that the guys in LA do not respect you so just understand that and that's not to mention that the guys out of state are probably more active because in LA they're just squabbling and squabbling and catching fades and hanging out in front of their million dollar hoods where nothing happens and they talk about how crazy it is but the point is that Brick Baby did the unthinkable and went against his own flag for his millionaire friend, going against everything he's ever said he stood for. And that just shows you the true character of Brick Baby, just grimy and slimy. Are you ready from the trenches? Are you showing love? Cause we not gonna get on your ass. You get what I'm saying? Cause you got it like how we got it. Cause you got it like how we got it. Cause you got it like how we got it. It's these pretending ass needs. You don't have a hood that you taking care of. You're not from the hood. Mm. 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 So now that we know where Brick Baby stands, let's focus back on the beef between Lil Durk and Quando. From all accounts, Quando and the Savannah Rolling 60s never wanted beef with Vaughn and really never wanted this to happen at all. And despite the fact that all Lil Tim did was defend his friend, Lil Durk still wants get back for Vaughn. Honestly, I did kind of feel like that too. I mean, I didn't really pick a side. You know, it was what it was. Like, if life goes on, shit happened, that shouldn't happen. Shit happened that should not happen, but it happened. You feel me? And um, I felt like when the whole incident happened, Vaughn, not Vaughn, rest in peace. Um, Quando didn't really get on social media like going off and this and the third. Like he literally said that. Oh, like if that would have happened to me, y'all would have been like, oh, R.I.P. or something. Like everybody was being biased during the situation, bro. And which I felt like. I think they did drop a diss, but hey, that was just a, you know, hey, 
<laughs> Let's make a little money off of this shit while we can, you feel me? But um nah, I didn't really feel like uh Quando was glorified in the situation that happened, bro. Like after that shit happened, I know I heard that he went blackballed and he was pretty quiet after that, bro. Well, given that Dirk lives in Atlanta and Quando and his boys are only a few hours away, you'd think that he'd send a hit to Savannah. But because Quando and his boys would have home field advantage, and it's the south where everyone's packing heat, it's not necessarily an easy hit. But instead, Dirk waits patiently for them to go to a particular city, a city where he knows he can get them gone. This of course would be the city of Los Angeles, which for three reasons would be the perfect place for him to do it. If Quando and his boys are in LA, they have no home field advantage, in fact they probably don't know where they are at any time. And secondly, they won't be strapped, because the laws in California make it pretty much impossible to do so. And the third reason? None other than Brick Baby. As we know, Brick Baby is the king of hawking down rappers as soon as they touch down in the city. And not only can he give you Quando's exact location, but he can also supply you with what you need. You know, them things. Well, from what the FBI states, Lil Durk waits patiently for Quando and his boys to go to LA. And that day would finally come, nearly two years after the demise of Vaughn, August 18th, 2022. It's a regular morning like any other when Lil Durk gets a call from an unknown source informing him of Quando's presence in LA. This is the opportunity he's been waiting for, so he seizes it and he quickly calls an OTF member by the name of Vani. OTF Vani, whose real name is Kavon Grant, is a certified stepper from Detroit who's known for getting things done. So as soon as Dirk gets the information on Quando, he calls up Vani and has him fly on his private jet to come meet him. So according to investigators from here, Dirk and Vani have a meeting where they discuss what needs to be done. And because of Vani's reputation for allegedly getting people slumped, he's tasked with handling all the logistics. This includes booking flights, hotel rooms, rental cars, and basically handling everything that needs to be done. So as soon as the meeting wraps up, Vani immediately gets to planning. First, he gets in contact with four reputed OTF steppers, hand-picked by him. These would be DeAndre Wilson, also known as Didi, Keith Jones, also known as Flocka, David Lindsay, also known as Brown Eyes, and Asa Houston, also known as Boogie. He informs them of the mission at hand and tells them to immediately get ready. Then, he makes a massive mistake. Using OTF credit cards, he books them red-eye flights to Los Angeles. Coincidentally, just minutes after doing this, Dirk texts him, Hey, don't book no flights under my name or anything that has to do with me. <laughs> Too late, buddy. Not only did he already use the OTF card to get them flights, but he also got them hotel rooms as well. On top of this, one of the hitters DMs his girl on Instagram and lets her know that he's on his way to Los Angeles. Regard um... To my new, uh, I don't even know why I'm gonna do this on there, but no, nah, just enjoy the video, my boy. Uh, just a little reaction video, just enjoy the video. But you can put your opinion down in the bottom, though. Regardless, this doesn't stop anything, and the four OTF hitters head to the airport for their midnight flight. Okay, so now that all the travel is handled, Vonnie hops on a private jet headed to Los Angeles. He touches down in the early morning, and now it's time for him to get everything together. August 19th, 2022, 7 a.m. Vani takes an Uber to a luxury car rental and gets a BMW M5 and an Infiniti G37. He then wipes them down individually and takes them to get tinted. While waiting for the cars, he takes an Uber to Big Five Sporting Goods where he buys four ski masks and four pairs of gloves. Oh, and not to mention, he again uses the OTF credit card. Well, once he leaves the sporting goods store, there's only two... All right, so basically this is Swamp Story, right? He basically breaks down um, different part of games from different cities, different, you know, organization type shit. And right now he's doing one on Brick Baby, you know, with the whole indictment. Um, well, I guess you could say the whole indictment with uh, Lil Dirt, you know, murder for hire. So like I said, just enjoy the video, dog things left for him to do. First, he needs some blicks. Secondly, he needs to find out exactly where Quando Rondo is. And here is where two new mystery men come into the picture. Known to the FBI as Co-Conspirator 2 and Co-Conspirator 4. Well, after the rental cars are ready, Vonnie meets up with Co-Conspirator 2. And when they meet up, number two hands him a duffel bag full of... <laughs> 
So they go their separate ways and Bonnie now meets up with number four. Together they go over strategy and number four tells him to follow him, he'll take him exactly to Quando's location. Ooh wee, it's really about to happen and now they go to the hotel to pick up the rest of the hitters. From here, Vonnie and the hitters inside the M5 in Infinity follow number four to Quando's location. Aha, there he is. They spot his black Escalade on Melrose Avenue. Then number four messages them and tells them that that is in fact Quando's car. Now he vanishes off in the distance and allows the OTF hitters to do what they do. They're now tracking the black Escalade down Melrose, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. Well, after a few minutes of following, the black Escalade busts a ride on Beverly Boulevard and pulls over to get some gas. Oh yeah, now it's the perfect time. They head up an alley next- Alright, my bad, yeah, I have somebody in the comment though. Uh, yeah, he the, he the Rolling 50 Crip from California, Muta, um, Atlanta, started the whole Rolling 60s out there, moved back to Cali, and started uh, chain snatching from every artist. Next to the gas station, park their cars, and get out on foot. They then run into the gas station and absolutely light up the Escalade. After emptying over 100 shots, they run back to their cars and vanish off in the distance. Thankfully, Quando Rondo was untouched, but sadly, his best friend wasn't. Right now, the search is on for three people who police say shot at a Savannah rapper, killing a member of his entourage. It happened in Los Angeles, and cameras captured the aftermath. Bro, that was crazy when that shit happened, bro. A, a lot of people were like... In this chaotic scene, the ending of a shooting... Especially when it happened in L.A., we're like, I, well, you know, for me, I was like, damn... Damn, like I was so confused and lost. I was just like, bro, buddy can't even go to California without somebody. How the hell that shit? Whoa, you feel me? And everybody was trying to say it was the transaction going wrong. It was this and the third. And then when he went back home, he dropped this flag. A lot of people were trying to clown him, but there was more to it. There was more in the background that started in Los Angeles, California. Sheriff's deputies pulling out a man who had been shot in an SUV. Savannah rapper Quando Rondo, a passenger in that car, frantic at the site. It all started at this mobile gas station at 5.30 Friday evening. LAPD says witnesses heard multiple gunshots, then watched a couple cars zoom off. Three people in one car shot at this black Cadillac Escalade. It's unclear if those inside shot back. Can I get, can I get some space, please? It ended at Santa Monica Boulevard. Deputies found it peppered with bullet holes <laughs> hey, and a like, hey, can you back up? Hold on, I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk to... Shot. The 23-year-old was taken to the hospital where he died. Uh, they pulled up. They were pumping gas. And it looks like they probably finished pumping gas. And the suspects uh, approached from the alley, got out of the car, and started shooting at those victims. Shortly after doing this, the OTF members wiped down the rental cars, put their plates back on, and returned them back to the owners. Now here is where things get interesting. After heading to the hotel and changing clothes, the four hitters head to Calabasas in an Uber to go to a burger restaurant. And there waiting for them is co-conspirator 2, who's there to discuss business and who gets paid what. Then once they come to a fair agreement, co-conspirator 2 takes a private jet to Chicago, and the rest of them head down to San Diego. This is where they wait for a couple of days, and a trustworthy friend of Dirk brings them a whole lot of money. Now this begs an important question, who does Dirk trust in California to handle a whole lot of his money? And on top of this, who did he trust to find Quando's location and to supply the weapons? Well, I have somebody in mind, and I definitely think he's either Co-Conspirator 2 or Co-Conspirator 4. Given everything we know about Brick Baby's history in the streets, his dislike for Quando Rondo, and his relationship with Dirk, it would only make sense. But not only does it make logical sense, but there's also a whole lot of information out there that will make you think that Brick Baby had something to do with this. So now let's get into the reasons why Brick Baby was certainly involved. Ooh here we go. Reason number one. Directly after losing his friend, of course, of course, as soon as it's about to tell us why. Quando Rondo. Alright, so I'm telling y'all. Um, if some of y'all didn't see it, I might, I might post it or whatever the case is, right? Um, like I said, after he dropped his video, Swamp Story, later on that night, there's a video, no jumper, of him on the phone with Adam and Brick Baby, bro. So I'm. Mm, 
It hit some spot. It hit something. Who blames the rolling 60s. Directly after the incident, he goes on social media and posts this on his story. Basically, what he's saying is that he's done with the rolling 60s, he's putting down his flag because of disloyalty. Now ask yourself, why after this incident would he be upset with his own gang, so much so that he's gonna put his flag down because of disloyalty? Obviously, he knew something the world didn't, that the rolling 60s had something to do with the death of Lil Pab. And as we know from the indictment, somebody from LA gave up his address, so who else could it possibly be? Who else in Los Angeles would know Quando's exact location other than his own gang who he's supposed to tap in with? And on top of this, which Rolling 60 would be connected to Dirk? Obviously Brick Baby. And that's just the first reason why I believe that Brick Baby is co-conspirator 4. And trust me, there's a whole lot of other reasons as well, all coming out of his own mouth. And now we're at reason number 2, Brick Baby hints at it and admits that he was involved. During the period after the incident, nobody was thinking that Lil Durk was involved because it happened in LA and the whole Rolling 60s thing. But that's when Brick Baby goes on No Jumper and reveals to the world that Lil Pab's death was get back for Vaughn. Bro, I swear when this shit hit the fan, when everybody woke up to Lil Durk being arrested and whatnot, and after a while, everybody started circling. This video started going back and forth, bro. Like, oh yeah, Brick Baby, this Brick Baby. And at first, I'm just like, nah. At first, I was just like, eh, you know, like, I, I ain't believe in my damn self. But it's just like more and more people that making uh, the videos on it. And it's just like, mm. and then you got whack. Apparently, whack don't even like Brick Baby. So whack is drilling him. Whack is bringing up a whole bunch of shit. Whack talking about he got caught with a Draco. Them shit the league can't have that shit in Cali. How'd you get picked up? And then you don't even have a bro. It was just so much shit. It's just like. Uh, yeah, you know what? He do got a point. Vaughn. Oh yeah, Sloth of Vaughn, right? Nobody. Yeah. They say you can't say that no more. Why? Oh yeah, cause of. Wait no, wait no, no. Like they who died? You can't say that no more. Okay, hold on. Real shit, right? He, Brick said that. Oh, you can't say that no more. But in, in all reality, no one was actually sitting here and, and, and like, unless I'm wrong, y'all let me know. Unless, you know, y'all stay with the whole, um what you call it, built up, the whole anger and whatnot. But I don't feel like anybody was on social media still sitting here talking about, damn, well, you know, you do have some trolls. But ain't nobody was really sitting here heavy talking about, damn, uh. Uh, what you call it? You ain't gonna fly. You ain't gonna fly. Da 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 da. I felt like that shit died down. I felt like everybody was moving on. He got the key to the city. A lot of people were proud. This and the third and whatnot, right? So how the hell once you get picked up by the Fed, all of a sudden, like, bro, you see, boom, he did. That, like, once he get picked up and the shit blows up, all of a sudden they bring this video up. Oh, cause of FBG Cash. Oh. Who? Nah, cause Lil Pop. Ooh wee, this is when people started to put two and two together. Lil Dirk had something to do with the death of Lil Pop. And isn't it interesting that one of Dirk's closest friends and Rolling 60s member is the one who revealed it? Well, WAC 100 thinks it's very odd as well. Could kind of turn into something. Cause if I'm not mistaken, he kind of made a comment like, <clears throat> I guess they can't say OTF didn't slide. There's no getting out of that. Listen, if he's just a random person, it's whatever, but he's somebody who's got photos with Dirk, he's been pictured with all the OTF guys and stuff. It seems like kind of, that was before he even worked for No Jumper. That actually was the interview that made me like, you know what, I'm gonna fuck with you. Wait, what? That's why you hired him? Cause he snitched on Lil Dirt. <laughs> what? But anyways, let's continue. Because at the time, OTF was never mentioned. Right. What, bro? He's the first one that made any type of anything that OTF was involved by saying, I guess they can't say they didn't slide for Bond no more. It's like, well, if this doesn't convince you enough, right after this, Brick Baby would drop a song where he basically incriminates himself. In Ooh. a song called Not Enough, here's what he says. He was ducking, trying to hide, now he in a blunt. We dropped a hundred shots, go dig your partner up. Then he oh. says the last one we turned into a- Yeah, I'm finna, I'm finna do a reaction on that. I ain't know he dropped what? Pack, oh, yeah. we got a million plus. And now knowing what we know from the indictment of the co-conspirators getting paid, I mean, you know, 
But of course on the flip side, he could just be lying about the money, right? Except for the fact that after this, he mysteriously starts living in a Calabasas four-bedroom mansion. So just a year after getting out of prison for robbing a jewelry store, you're living in a Calabasas mansion. How does that make sense? I mean, no jumper ain't paying that much, because I promise you Brick Baby's house is worth more than Adam's. Don't forget Brick Baby is, is, is the rich crit. Okay, so let's get back on track. The No Jumper interview where he reveals that the low pop situation was get back for Vaughn, that was in February. And strangely, just a couple weeks later in March, the feds start tracking Brick Baby's every move. In fact, they even spy on him for four months straight. I know you was getting followed for four months. For, it was four months? Hell yeah. The only thing you told me is that they were following you back and forth from your house to here. And that yeah. kind of tripped me out. Yeah. I'm like, wow, so these fools are just like, but he fed my outside without sometimes and we don't right. even know. And low with grandma van, like soccer vans and shit. And after four months of spying on him, they finally raid his house in the middle of the night. Yep, on June 25th, 2023, his Calabasas mansion was raided and they found an AK-47. Now generally, this isn't that serious, but given that he's a four-time felon, this is no joke. In fact, just like Crip Mac, he was facing up to 15 years in prison. And even though he seemed to wiggle out of serious consequences for every felony he's ever had, this one is how. a little different because it's the feds. Well, long story short, over the next year, somehow the case just magically disappears. And that really makes you wonder, how does a four-time felon have such a big case dropped just like that? Well, actually, the first question is why was he being spied on and why was he raided in the first place? Does it have anything to do with the murder of Lil Pob? or the fact that he was snitching on himself. Well, WAC 100 seems to think that he snitched to get out of this, and that's why Lil Durk is now indicted. Brick got an open case, and every- I don't know why, but I'm stuck on the fact of the mugshot, bro. Like, the, yeah, I can't see my eyes like that, but it was just like, no, nah, that's the eye of the sober, bro. No, nah, that's the eye of the uh. Lil Durk is now indicted. Brick got an open case. And everybody's watching, Brick. Where are your court dates? Boom! OTF is hit with an indictment. And even if Brick didn't actually snitch, Wax says that he could be the reason that the feds even look Lil Dirk's direction. Now, you got the people saying, well, this dude's a known gang member. He ran with these people. Okay, well, let's look over there. Maybe they wasn't even thinking about looking over there. But because they heard him say it, they like, let's, 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 look, let's look into that. Let's just see where it takes us. And they might have looked at one dude, grabbed at one dude from what they heard, and the one dude went bad and fed him everything else. So, Okay, so let's now play devil's advocate, right? <laughs> let's assume that Brick Baby had nothing to do with the death of Lil Pob and that he's not a snitch. And if that's actually the case, please explain these two reactions. This was his live reaction to receiving the news that the four OTF members were indicted. Bro, yeah. see, and they stay bringing this in. Listen, the internet is under, the internet is undefeated, bro. At this point, I don't even think the FBI dudes, I, listen, I don't even think they, they, they do their own research anymore, bro. I think they just listen. I think they just look up content like somebody going to break it down for us. <laughs> you feel me? Because everybody was bringing up this story too, this video, when they're like, oh, yeah. When they talk about the four guys that got arrested, his reaction on, on this podcast it shit shifted. And I'm like, what y'all talking about? This Damn. is crazy. Hang on, wait. Yeah, that's it. Wait, was uh -huh. this an attempt or an alleged no, he, attempt? he did. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Wanda. Yeah. Hey, boy, listen at that. Boy, your heart did drop to your ass. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Looks like the four OTF members <coughs> were indicted. Yeah, look, 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 look. Hang on, wait. He yeah, finished reading? He, he wait, recognized? Was this an attempt? Or an alleged no, he, attempt? He and his heart dropped to his ass. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. Wanda. Yeah, Lil Pap is his man, his dead, his man's is dead. Oh, his boy, but no, but nah, he didn't get him. Nah, Quando's fine. So they got his boy instead. <laughs> his boy is dead. Yeah. But were they alleged to try to get him too? Yeah, he was there. So, but was um, he the intended target? That I don't know. Yeah, See, right. this is how you need to be when you enter, when you sit down with Diddy's bodyguard. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, with Biggie's this bodyguard. Good. See, this is good. This is I'm exactly getting, I'm the kind a free of lesson here as well. Yeah. So essentially. Thank you for that, by the way. Thank 1,000. I appreciate it. Got you, my buddy. So 
So this dude, Quando Rondo, he's an artist that was affiliated. Yeah, that nigga thinking with... hard as hell. Boy, that nigga in his head right now. Look, he's not even, bro, he ain't paying no no mind to what's going on around. Like, bro, he's like, all right, bro. Um, Alleged had killed King Von. Look, look. So, and this was yeah. allegedly a retaliation for that. Nah, that's crazy. The, so the feds <laughs> char it says charging indictment with. You know when somebody's shocked, but they not shocked anymore. It is like no, like. Man, that's crazy, right? Um, nah. So what I was about to say was. Unsealed. It said was unsealed Thursday in the U.S. District Court in Los Angeles. Are Kevin London, DeAndre Wilson, Keith Jones, David Bryan, and Austin Houston. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking too deeply into it, but he seems nervous. And to make matters even worse, he says that giving up Quando's location for Lil Dirk is something that he would actually do. <laughs> like, why would you say that? that then it's people like you lined up somebody from your hood like listen i didn't do sh but at the end of the day what's wrong with giving my friend the address oh uh, this is my boy he lost his boy who did it could be around i'm nine times out of ten it had he had asked me i probably would have been uh -huh. cause if he even asked anybody if this is even true but nine times out of ten like i said can I can I leak a bar? Sure. I said if he make the car right now, I dig his up in. Right. What's wrong what with getting hell? somebody from your own gang killed because your friend asked you to? I mean, what's wrong with that? Like, forget on a moral level. Clearly, this guy has no morals. But on a street level as well, especially in LA, openly admitting to backdooring your own gang for your millionaire buddy is crazy. So you guys tell me what you think. Firstly, do you think Brick was involved in the hit in any way, and was he co-conspirator 2 or co-conspirator 4? And secondly, do you think he's a federal informant that gave up Dirk for his own protection? And even if he didn't officially snitch, do you think that his song lyrics and comments on podcasts are the reason that the feds looked into Lil Dirk? Well, personally, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that Brick Baby goes to jail for the rest. No, I'm just kidding. I won't. <laughs> okay, I'm about to say. do that. But what I will do is hope that you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. All right. Um, I appreciate the four likes, though. I ain't gonna lie. I think it was five or whatever. But I do appreciate it, and uh, I'm kind of happy we kind of finished this one. Shit. But I'm gonna get at you on the next one. Y'all hit that like and that subscribe, and uh, follow your boy on Twitch. One.